Hey, David Ravhoff here. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick video on some TypeScript work that I'm doing. So um, I'm coming from a background of uh, having used AngularJS and Angular and um, trying to get up to speed on TypeScript and Redux and then some other um, tools that they uh, take advantage of. Uh, and also wanted to make sure that I understood how to handle doing testing with it. Um, so yeah, I just um, took uh, the basic create react app, uh, is kind of my starting point. And I found another tutorial, which I'll link, um, that went a little bit further and started actually making network calls to, um, just pull back, um, uh, star Wars characters from an API. And, uh, so I, I took those pieces as kind of the starting point, but then really wanted to kind of build out just, um, a really rough like example app a little bit more and make sure that I had um, tests in place and good test coverage and uh, was breaking up components in kind of a reasonable way. Um, basically just trying to make a really small sandbox where I could um, try out a lot of the uh, different features, figure out uh, how they work together and then try to get the quality up a bit. So uh, I'm still very new to this. So this is just kind of my initial uh, spike into it. So. Um, I'll take you through that here in a second and just kind of show you what I've got. So uh, here you can see I've got server running and uh, you'll notice here I've got this list of uh, Star Wars characters and if I want I can type in a character here and do a search and uh, that'll bring back uh, just that character and I'm kind of curious what will happen if I just do that. Yeah, it'll give me the full list again. Um, so yeah, it just has some of the basics like an initial... Um, uh, you know, pull of these characters from um, an API using uh, Axios, I think is the way you say it, Axios, I'm not sure. Um, you know, displaying those uh, characters when they come back, and then um, I'll get into how the components are broken out a little bit more, but then you're yeah, also having the ability to do search and update the list of characters as well. Um, I wonder if there's something we can do to get to... Let's see if we can do... Hold on, maybe Darth yeah, should give us two. Cool, yeah, and you notice too, there was a little loading state um, in there as well. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to point out a couple things about this too. So I'll pull up the Redux Dev Tools because uh, one of the really nice things about um, using the Redux pattern or just reactive programming, but yeah, uh, Redux, and you can get this with like NGRX and Angular, <laughs> is that um, which one of the things that you're doing is you're making the data flow one way. So, um, you know, you'll you'll go through, uh, kind of load up your app and then fire off an event. And that event might be, um, you know, go get me a list of characters or whatever. Um, and then uh, a reducer will take that, do whatever the uh, action is that needs to get done uh, and update your, your store. And then um, anything that's interested in getting information uh, updates from the store can automatically get those updates. So um, basically you're, you're sitting off an event saying, hey, I want to do this thing. And then um, you have some code that, that says, yeah, this you know, actually tries to do the thing. And then it changes the store and gives you a new version of the store. Um, so one thing that's really cool about that is you can actually step through the complete... Um, uh, history of of kind of the uh, interactions or the events in your app um, and it's, in some ways it's kind of like if you think about it, like in the command pattern and being able to like undo or redo actions so here you can see on the left we've got a list of all these events that i've fired off so this is the initial event and you can see at this point there's no characters and it's not doing any fetching for the character state and then we can um, just kind of click through these here so you can see here, um, firing off an event saying I want to um, start trying to get characters. And then that's just changing. Uh, this is fetching to true. And if you if you want, you can just switch the diff over here so you can see exactly what's changing. But um, I think it's kind of nice. Also, if you hop over here, you can see what uh, the action was. But that's already listed out over here. So I'll leave it on uh, maybe diff for a second. So yeah, we can go from it's starting to request it to receiving um to firing off an event saying it was successful 
and then that's going to update the list of characters and under character state with all the characters that we got and it's going to go from is fetching true to false because it's done and it succeeded and then here we can see um this should have been uh when we did the search i think so here it's going again from a false to true for is fetching and updating our uh, giving us an updated store with uh, looks like removed items oh, I'm sorry that's the diff hold on let me look at this state so there's our list of characters and then now we're down to just the one character and then again we tried to search again and that was with uh, that was when I removed everything from the search box. So I just did a, a full search, succeeded, and updated the character list again. And then this was when I uh, did a search for Vader, I believe, which just returned uh, Vader. So the store is updated with uh, Darth Vader. And then in this one, I started, and when it succeeded, I was searching for Darth. So it just returned uh, the two characters with Darth in their name. So it's kind of cool, and you can actually step back down here if you want. You can step back and see the changes happening in the app, which is pretty awesome. So, like, if you need, if you had a bug that happened, or you were trying to figure out like where something's going wrong, you can just step right through the whole history of whatever happened, and you can see <coughs> in this column in the middle, it's updating where we are in those um, actions, uh, which is great because like one of the things that can be a real pain with um, dealing with JavaScript apps or TypeScript apps is um, trying to figure out where things went wrong or why they went wrong or what what the app looked like at a certain state. Um, I mean, even on uh, in like a Ruby app or something, um, it'd be nice to have this level of being able to just like walk your way through the different states of the app. So this is, to me, is like one of the big advantages of uh, this, this pattern. Um, and again, it's not only React that can do it, but um, it's just a, a nice pattern that React uh, typically uses so uh, let's take a look at the test real quick uh, <laughs> so one of the things I wanted to do as I mentioned was uh, make sure that I have good test coverage so here I'm running uh, testing with a coverage report and you can see uh, you can see the reports up here of what's being tested and what's not being tested you can break it down by statements branches functions lines of code uh, it'll even point out which lines aren't covered. Um, I don't know how well this would scale up with a big app, but it, it works okay for the smaller app here. Uh, and then you can see it's pointing out where I've, I'm kind of below some thresholds that I set. So this uh, character container uh, is only 60% tested if you look at it by statement and a third tested if you look at it by function. And here it's just listing out where I could improve testing there. Uh, <laughs> one thing that gets tricky though is... Um, uh, being careful not to test the framework itself or the tools themselves. And um, this character container is one where I'm not quite sure how I would go about adding a test that's really adding value and not just testing um, that the, the underlying tools are working as expected. So I'm still kind of trying to figure that one out. Um, if you have any thoughts on that, please uh, throw a comment in. Uh, this character container is kind of the uh, smarter data aware container. Um, so there's some things there with how to like wire that up that I don't really think should be tested. Um, and I, I've actually linked in this, uh, I'll put a link to the, this repo and the comments in the video, but I actually have a link to um, a couple different approaches for how to test this. And I tried both and I um, chose the one that chooses not to um, test kind of the underlying tools. So that was one thing that was kind of a challenge to figure out. Um, and then code-wise, uh, don't really have time to go through everything, but I'll kind of give you the rough tour here. So index is the, uh, the page that's going to get loaded. Uh, sorry, the, I guess, component that's going to get loaded uh, by the app. And then here it's going to try to get the um, root component with the store. So we'll hop over to root. Oh, and it's going to attach it to uh, a div with the ID, or yeah, div with the ID root. And then this component is uh, not doing a whole lot. It's setting up um, 
what what the interface is for this store and then providing that store through this provider tag, which you'll also see up here at the top. That's something that comes in through uh, the React Redux library. Um, and that's basically just making the store available to any component within it. So um, I think traditionally there's just an uh, app is what's loaded directly in index, but here I introduced something else called root to wrap all of app. Um, and if we hop over to app, you'll see that there's actually not a whole lot going on here. And this is such a thin component. I may actually convert character container to app just cause it's kind of the, the main component that's doing the heavy lifting. And this isn't probably isn't adding enough value on its own. Um, and then here, this is, uh, more or less what's involved, uh, what's responsible for loading up most of the UI that you saw. So, um, I'm not going to go into everything in detail here, but you can see maybe from the markup, uh, it's pulling in a navigation bar and then within the navigation bar, it's, um, loading character search, uh, which is just the little, the input and button that we have for searching for characters. And then depending on whether or not, um, we're fetching data, we either show a loader or we show the list of characters. Um, so just an example of a conditional here in the template. Uh, one thing that's worth pointing out here too is um, you can do things like this in your JSX. Um, JSX is new to me, so I'm uh, just pointing this out. But um, it's kind of cool because you can include a child here inside of navigation bar versus um, having to pull this over into the navigation bars um, template. Um, and because I want uh, search characters to be available um, f from here. It it's just kind of easy to be able to add the character search here and just go ahead and take advantage of the fact that search characters is available uh, since this is kind of my data aware container. So I'm trying to keep stuff pretty like flat underneath the um, data aware container. And then, um, yeah, the character list is pretty straightforward. Like basically if we've got a list of characters from our props, uh, which is getting set up here. Um, it'll just, you know, create a list. And then um, for each character, if there are any, it'll return um, a character list item. Um, it's probably worth breaking that up into two chunks. This whole list, maybe we wouldn't want that to render if there's no characters, but uh, I think one of the outer containers kind of might deal with that. Um, anyway, uh, and then each of these has a key. Uh, it's just one of the requirements. Uh, React has uh, to be able to help with performance to know what which thing changed if it changes um, and then yeah just passing in the character info for each of those list items and then here's uh, just a component for each of those list items which is pretty dumb all it does is know that it should get a character from the props and then it sets up a key for each of the list items and then spits out um, the character name these styles are uh, just bootstrap styles, standard bootstrap styles. So nothing uh, too interesting going on there. So yeah, I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of places where I'm not sure like what is the right uh, trade-off to make. Um, so that's something I want to be like digging into a bit more as I'm learning all this. Uh, like for example, maybe it's not worth splitting out uh, this list item into its own component. Maybe I should just include the list items directly here. Um, Typically, I kind of bias towards breaking things out in as small pieces as possible because then you only have to go to one place to, to change something. Um, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, that's just kind of my first impressions on this. Um, I feel like it was pretty easy to get into. Like, um, uh, you know, the concepts are pretty similar to what you would do in Angular, um, assuming you're using like NGRX. Um, but yeah, so far it's been pretty interesting. I'm just going to kind of keep pushing on this. I'll share all the uh, a link to the repo for this if you're interested. Uh, one of the things I was really wanting to do was get a more meaningful um, demo app together for React and Redux. Um, I, felt, I found a lot of kind of like fragments of apps that did little bits and pieces of what I'm doing here, but wanted to kind of get everything into one place. Um, so anyway, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more videos on uh, React or 
uh, Redux or um, even like TypeScript, uh, just let me know. It's always helpful to know what's interesting to you. And um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.